that if you take a young prepubertal female and you expose her to the scent of a reproductively competent male as short as a few hours, and she is also not regularly being exposed to the scent of her father, that she can undergo puberty earlier. So many people believe that one of the reasons that puberty is happening earlier and earlier in females is because of the accumulation of more body fat at younger ages than was observed 30 or 40 and certainly 100 years ago. Now, I can already imagine a number of people are thinking, oh, this must re relate to the obesity crisis. And indeed, there is a crisis of obesity. Obesity uh, is something that is causing all sorts of um, problems with people's health at various levels, brain and body. And that is far more frequent today than it was even 20 years ago. So it is indeed a crisis because it has enormous detrimental effects for so many aspects of, of brain and body health and longevity. Over the last 100 years or so, the onset of puberty has been occurring much earlier with each passing decade. In the United States, around 1900 or 1903, the average age of menarche, the onset of puberty in females, was about 14 years old. Whereas in 1990, the average age is 11. So that's a pretty significant, um, we could say, acceleration of the onset of puberty. Look at for instance, the data from Norway, which dates back uh, quite far, they have excellent record keeping, <laughs> to 1850. What we see is that the average age of the onset of female puberty in 1850 in Norway was 17 years old, whereas in 1970, it's 13 years old. So this is a dramatic acceleration of the onset of puberty. And you see a similar trend in other countries as well. So over again, regardless of location in the world, which is important because when you start to think about the obesity crisis, you can say, well, that's mainly in developed countries, believe it or not, or perhaps not surprisingly. And maybe it has to do with the obesity crisis. And yet, I don't think we can conclude that at all. Something is happening, however. It could be increased body fat stores due to overeating and obesity. However, it could also be unrelated to obesity. It could be, for instance, improved nutrition and the availability availability of quality nutrition, which can signal the maturation of the brain and body mechanisms that trigger the onset of puberty, ovulatory cycle, and menstruation. So we want to be very careful about leaping to conclusions about what these trends mean, but the trends themselves are very, very apparent. And as a final point, I should also mention that there are a number of different behavioral and psychosocial, as they're called, interactions that can influence puberty as well. This has been most strikingly observed in animals. And so I don't want anyone to be alarmed or to leap to any great conclusions about the onset of timing of puberty in humans, but I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about a certain result which shows that if a young female is exposed to the odor, not necessarily the pheromones, right? There's a distinction between odors that we perceive and pheromones which are subconscious, right? That we don't actively perceive, but that can impact our biology and pheromone effects in humans are very controversial. but. We know, for instance, that if you take a female animal, and there's some evidence from humans that if you take a young prepubertal female and you expose her to the scent of a reproductively competent male for a series of days, but maybe even as short as a few hours, and she is also not regularly being exposed to the scent of her father, that she can undergo puberty earlier. That's right. There is something about the odor and or pheromones or perhaps something else that occurs when a young prepubertal female has a father that she's in regular contact with. He wouldn't necessarily have to live at home, but that is around a lot that her his smell, excuse me, is registered by her biological systems that I don't want to say protects because it kind of skews the uh, the valence of the conversation, but that that offsets or buffers the otherwise observed effect, which is that the scent of a reproductively competent male, if it's present often enough or perhaps intensely enough, that it can trigger the onset of puberty in that female. In other words, the scent of a, of a male that is not the father, and we think also that is not biologically related to her, can trigger earlier onset of puberty. And that effect can at least be partially buffered by her being in the presence of the scent from her biological father. Now, some of you are probably already leaping to conclusions about what this means. You know, should you uh, not allow your daughter to be exposed to any males who are of reproductive age, et cetera? Uh, that's is 
certainly not what I'm saying. There's a huge number of considerations that um, that go into that calculation for everybody and circumstances, etc. But the point is that the odors of individuals, both related, in particular closely related, and non-related individuals, can shape the neural systems and the hormone systems that can trigger the onset of puberty or suppress the onset of puberty. 